Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We put our hands together and just give God praise in this house. Yes, Lord. Amen. He is so worthy of our praises, worthy of our adoration. Yes. Amen. He has yes. been an amazing God. Yes. We yes. love him. We adore him on this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We bless him. We lift him up. Can yes. we just stand to our feet? Amen. Yes. And just Shabbat the Lord in this place. Oh, Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He's kept us all week long. Yes, He's yes, been an amazing Lord. God. Yes, we oh, love yes, him. We adore him. Yes, we lift him up. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, we have Lord. so much to thank the Lord for. Yes, Amen. Yes, Glory Lord. be to God. Yes, he has been Lord. gracious. Yes, he has been yes, kind. Yes, he has been merciful yes, unto us. Yes, Glory yes, be to God. Yes, so many battles yes, he's caused us to win. Yes, Come on. Yes, just this week. Hallelujah. Just this week, so many battles, he's caused us to win, yes, hallelujah, so many Lord. doors, he's opened just this week, and I am grateful to the Lord, yes. glory be to God, yes, hallelujah, you. our son graduated on yesterday, yes. the last of our crew, amen, from high school, amen, and we are grateful to the Lord, he didn't have to do it, amen, hallelujah, he didn't have to do it. But we are so glad that he yes, did. Yes, Amen. God. And we bless the Lord. So says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Why? Because he has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it seems like. Hallelujah. The Lord has done great things. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Whatever your problem may be, whatever your problem may seem like, God is bigger than your problem. Hallelujah. You can tell your problem about God. Hallelujah. He is the problem solver. He is the problem fixer. It can be turned around in an instant. I'm so glad to be able to serve a God like him. A God who loves me. A God who is unchanging. A God whose love is unconditional. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We love him on this morning. It is our youth Sunday. Amen. And we are excited about our youth. We are excited about what God is doing in the lives of our youth. Amen. And on this morning we have Sister Serenity who is coming with our prayer. And following her we have two scripture readings from uh, Brother CJ Carleek. He's coming with one of our scriptures. And then Brother Micah, he's coming with our next scripture in that order. Amen. Come on. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for waking us up this morning, God. Thank you for blessing us with a brand new day, God. Thank you for blessing us with everything that we have, God. Thank you for blessing us with our family, God, our friends, God, everyone in our life, God. Thank you for placing the right people in our lives, God. Thank you for being, helping us be surrounded with good people in our life, God. People who love you, God. People who worship you, God. People who trust you, God. People who believe in you, God. Thank you for blessing me, God. Thank you for blessing me in school, God. Thank you for blessing us everywhere that we go, God. Thank you for giving my family members, God. Close ones, God. The people we don't know, God. And the people we do know, God. Thank you for blessing us, God. Thank you for blessing us mentally, physically, God. Financially, God. Thank you for helping us get our church living.
shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hands and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have sent you this day over nations and over kingdom, kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. 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 Come on, Mike. Come on. I'll be reading from Psalm 100. Come on, please. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Yes. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever in his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise yes. unto the Lord. Hallelujah. All ye land, come on, serve the Lord with gladness. Come on, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Come on, enter into his courts with what?
He can do just what he said he can do in this world. He does just what he said he can do. We bless your name, oh God. Oh, come on, we serve an exceeding God. He says above. We ask God for this. He said, I can give you this. He said, God, I need you to do this. He said, I want to do this.
Woo! confession of your faith will I build my church in the very gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. I know it may feel like, hallelujah, sometimes it may feel like the gates of hell is prevailing, but I'm here to let you know, hallelujah, Satan won't win, hell won't win. Glory be to God, you will win. Hallelujah, I dare somebody to jump up and declare I'm a winner. Hallelujah, it might feel like you're losing, but baby, you're a winner. You're winning in this, hallelujah. Even in this, whatever your this is, I'm not the preacher. We have a preacher on today. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I, I've had the pleasure of introducing him a few times. He's my brother. Amen. He's my friend. Amen. But I'm going to let his other brother introduce him today. I'm going to bring before you Minister Carpenter, and he's going to introduce our speaker of the hour. Amen. Put your hands together for Minister Amen. Carpenter. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord, you Lord Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Coming before us on this morning is a brother who, he is a brother. Yes, he is. We, we fellowship from time to time, and every time that we fellowship, it's, it's real. Yes, hold up. I trust that the calling on his life is magnified. Coming before us now is a man who not only preaches the word, but he walks the word. Yes. Um, he is a father, an awesome father, an awesome husband. Yes, he is. Um, and I'm sure his family will attest to that. Amen. Um, this is a brother that I can truly call a brother. I know that if I need him for something, he is there. Right there. Praise Amen. God. So I trust that what he is going to release to us is truly a word from the Lord. Um, I'm asking that you listen with open minds and open hearts as the Lord begins to pour out through his vessel. Amen. So I ask that we all stand at this time so that we can honor not only the Lord, but honor his vessel on yes. today. Hallelujah. Amen. So I present this song and I introduce to others, teacher Louis Johnson. Can we put our hands together? Right? Oh, Amen. Amen. this morning. Praise God. I know the world system presses, presses the, the holiday and, and the, the need to um, have your hot dogs and your hamburgers and find on, a, tell it, a, a tell veteran it. or uh, yes. uh, somebody who served and to tell them thank you. And there's a time that we know in the, in the world culture to get together as a family yes. and have family time together. But I want to honor you for making the press to come here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because there's some that who, who did not make the choice to come. So right, I, I, right. I, I honor you that's for right. making the choice to come and fellowship with the, the body of Christ to worship and exalt the name of the Lord. Yes, Amen. Yes. And first, and also to give honor to the under shepherd of this house and his his hat that stands beside him, Pastor Melvin Ray. Ministers in respect of faith, my brother and Minister Willie Carpenter, his wife, and Elder Carpenter. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. For the attorney on the keys, yeah. Yeah. and everybody in their respective places, yeah. everybody who participated thus far in the service, Amen. the praise and worship team, y'all did an yeah. excellent job, y'all made yeah. it fresh to, to make, make it happen on this morning, Amen. to set the atmosphere. Amen. 
But more than anything else, let's give praise and honor and lift the name of the Lord. Amen. If it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here on today. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to come together and worship and call his name together. So let's give it up to Jesus. Amen. Let's give it up to the Lord. Amen. 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 And speaking of those hot dogs and hamburgers, I won't not be before you long. I will take my time, but I will also not rob you of your time. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get straight to the point, straight to the scripture, and, and, and feast on God's word together. Amen. 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 Before we go into scripture, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your, your spirit on this morning. We thank you for what you're about to do when we fellowship in your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the transformation that's going to take place because of your word. Yes. For you said in your word that when you send out, it will not return to you, boy. And it will accomplish just what it has been set out to do. Yes. But so, Lord, we pray in faith and we pray in thanksgiving that what you have set out for your word to do, it will be done. Yes. We expect it to be done. Yes. And we thank for the minds and hearts that will be transformed by the reading and the feasting and the revelation that will come forth from your word. So with that being said, Lord, allow me to decrease so you can increase. And you get all the glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 For those of us who are taking notes, we come out of Mark chapter 4. Mark 4. Verses 5 through 6. Thank you, Lord. And verses 14 through 17. And Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. That's Mark chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Verses 14 through 17. And Psalms 1. One through three. All right. I'll give you a moment to get the phones and your Bibles out. And with that being said, um, just to person make sure that when we fellowship in the Word, when we come together as a body and as a, as a family of believers, we have to make sure and ensure that we ourselves as adults as well as our children come together. When we come together, make sure we have have the Word with us. That's yeah. right. Amen. We have to make sure that we have have our Bibles with us, have the Word with us, because we can't really genuinely fellowship together. We only have to, our Word in our own that individual right. hands. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So let's make sure that we come when we come, we come have with we right. have the Word with us. If, if it's on your phone, bring your phone, but make sure you have that app on you. That's if you have your Bible, that's make sure good. you have your that's Bible right. with you. That's that's right. Right. That's Amen. Right. So let's make sure we make make that happen each and every Sunday, or let alone each and every time we fellowship in the Word. That's right. All right? Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, for the ring of the Word, maybe I'll stand and again we're gonna start at Mark four, verses five through six, and we'll go on to verses fourteen through seventeen. And just for backdrop, this is the parable of the sower. Yes. All right, Mark 4, verses, starting at verse 5, and I'll be coming out of the NIV version. Okay. Some fell on rocky places where it did, my, did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Down to verse 14. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy, verse 17. But since they have no root, no they last only a short time. Yes, sir. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Yes, sir. If I had a topic this morning, the topic would simply be, these stones can't stay. Come on. Come on. These stones you better say that can't again. stay. Amen. 
With the culture and the social and economic culture that we live in, uh-huh. it seems that the overwhelming perception of being a follower in the body of Christ is more jaded and scrutinized than ever before. Sometimes you find yourselves, that me, in a lose-lose situation. When you stand for Christ, you may be called a certain thing one or another. When you generally stand for Christ, you may be called these things. But if you, people know that you're in the church and you don't stand for Christ, you'll call something else. That's right. So you still being a human and dealing with these things going back and forth, you find yourself sometimes in a lose-lose situation. Mm. So with that being said, if there was a time to be rooted and grounded in Christ, the time is right, right now. now. Come on. But the way things are going in the world system, this life that you live in, things are going haywire. Yes. You see from the left, from the right, from the north to the south, things are going more and more out of control, and you have less and less grasp of what you can do and what you cannot do. Mm-hmm. So the only way you can withstand the fire, withstand the wind, withstand the storms that we are not in control of is to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Amen. Sometimes, and at times, the lack of seeing the true and living God in other people was not evident for me when I was young because looking to part to be in the body or when things don't go their way, it seems like their God doesn't even exist. Lord Jesus. It seemed like when they want to stand for Christ, things go good, or when they want to exude Christ, things will go good and things go their way. There's no hope for Christ. But when things don't go their way in their life, it seems like their God doesn't even exist. And this is coming from a 9, 10 year old little boy living across Holly Hill slash Moss Corner, seeing this on a day to day basis. Yes. So even growing up as a child, I realized that hypocrisy was not a thing that I did not want to be Come if on. I wanted to worship the God that they serve. That's yes. right. right. That's so we right. have to be careful as, in terms of what some of us know as code switching. Yes. Code switching code is switch. when you become something depending on where you're at or when you're around a certain body of people. Yeah. I, at one time, had a payment arrangement that I had to set up through a phone company. So I called the phone company and I heard a young lady on the phone. You can tell when somebody's of a certain ethnicity. Yes. When, you, when they pick up the phone, when they take your call. And you can sip, you, can, you know where we're from. We're from Charleston. And you know that the actual Gishi accent is, is prevalent. You know, certain people live in certain places that that accent is going to be there. Mm-hmm. So on the midst of the call, I was like, okay. I picked up two things. I was like, I was, oh, she's from here. And also, she tried to be so professional, and you could tell she was a younger person, and she was trying to be so hard to be professional, but at the same time, in the back of her throat, you could still hear that accent. You could still hear that geeshi. And while she was going along, I was like, okay, I really want to tell, hey, li- listen, just don't yourself. just, 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 just be yourself. Your customer service will go even further if you come off as authentic, right. Right. you don't have to cold switch just because you at work. Right. You don't have to cold switch just because you at school or around a certain number. Of people. You're not gonna get kudos points by being something that you're really not. Does that make sense? Yes. And also, it the same thing applies within the body of Christ. That's right. God made you a certain way. Amen. There's no point in cold switching. There's no point of turning on a switch. When you come to church, yes. the same Louis that you see in church on Wednesday, on Sunday morning is going to be the same Louis you hopefully see Wednesday after work. That's right. Amen. That's right. Remain the same. Just as so twice. regardless of where you go, make sure that you don't spread hypocrisy by code switching with your faith wall. That's right. And you, the same thing goes, goes for young people. Like, you don't have to switch up. That's right. That's right. The same. Just be who you are. You can still be who you are and still be holy. Amen. That's it. Come on. You can still be who you are and stand for righteousness. So don't ever get it twisted to where, okay, you know what, I'm in church. I have to, I don't feel, I don't feel like I fit in because I think I have to cold switch. That's right. That's never the case. Always be yourself. Always. But even as adults, sometimes we find ourselves cold switching subconsciously. Sometimes we find ourselves cold switching 
and we don't realize or even think about, okay, why am I close with you right now? Why do I feel like I have to step into something at one time and step into something else at another? Do I have to change my personality when I'm in one place right. and when in another? Or what's, what's causing me not to do, what's causing me to do that? What's causing me not to be my authentic and genuine self? Mm -hmm. So, what, what we're going to be talking about this morning is these stones preventing you from being who God wants you to really be. Oh, Jesus, my God. All right. So, but the parable that we see here in verse 5, going back to verse 5, we see Jesus speaking to his disciples about, and particularly in this, in this verse, where the seed falls on rocky soil. And the seed being scorched up because the soil was shallow. If gardeners know that if you, have, if you want a particular tree or particular thing to grow, you have to have a certain amount of soil. You have to have a certain amount of soil and that's go deep enough to where when you plant that thing, the roots have to grow down so that a plant can grow up. So we see here in the text where this particular seed could not spring up and grow and put forth fruit because when that seed sprang up quickly, the sun scorched the plant because it didn't have no roots. Oh God. So we see in, in the text that the, the seed represents the word of God. Yes. And the same thing applies to us. When we see the seed being planted, we have to ensure that the soil is not rocky. All right? The soil cannot be rocky. So we had to sometimes figure to ourselves, okay, am I, is, the, is my soil deep enough? Mm, Jesus. Am I, am I in a posture to where my seed can be deposited in the correct fashion? And we see here in the text in verse 5 where... The seed can represent a soil within us to where when we hear the word, we can receive it joyfully. But we can sometimes go about it, hear the word, and we go out of these four walls and act on it simply because we remember it. That's it. And we can, so we can put forth the word, act on it, and, and just because we remember it, but at the same time, when, when the troubles come, when the trials will come because of that same word, just because we remembered it, the sun scorches that word or scorches your remembrance of that word. It, it no longer has value to it because it wasn't put in the depths of your heart. Oh God. Even David said, hide thy word in my heart so I don't sin against thee. So his, his motion, his motive was that the seed, the word of God was going to be planted so deep in him to where wherever that he go, he will mess up in God's eyes. That's right. That was the goal he was striving for. Amen. So we see here in the text, that's what this, this is referring to when it comes to the, the word of God being sown in the depth of your heart. And the word, the, the thing is, the word has contained so much faith that sometimes you can see that people who are not, even not in relationship with him, they can act on his word and still get a result. Just because of the faith that's contained inside the word of God. But that is not the strive for the believer. The strive for the believer is to have the word planted deeply inside of your heart. So that wherever that you go, you will bear much fruit. Yes. Wherever that you go, you're going to get a result. Oh, amen. So when you come across a situation and you be like, no, the word of God says, boom, A, B, C, D, E. Something has to happen. Something has to happen. Or if you act on the word, if you love in spite of, if you do something for somebody in spite of, for example, something has to happen. Something has to happen. Yes, Lord. When people get confused, for example, when they be like, okay, why are you doing this? Come on. For me. Come on. Come on. That something, that's the, the telling of the ground is happening. Come on. The, the, that ground is being broken up because now you're sowing the fruit that you already bought. That's right. That's right. Amen. 
So we have to be ever so careful of making sure that the word is, is hidden down inside of our hearts. The life that God has given you has something in it for the world to use. When God's word is planted in your life, that is when he can produce the life he has given for you. Amen. And that same life can benefit others. So, in the same sense, we see here, in this chair, I have, it's just a base with some soil in it. Okay. This soil represents the life God has given you. Come on. Before you were born, God already knew you. Yes, he he had the plans he had for you in his own mind. Yeah. So he already got set up the potential he has for you in this life. Come on. So what you think your life consists of doesn't compare to what God has for you in the life he gave you even before you was born. Amen. So when we see this and we understand, okay, I have this life, I have this soil. And God wants to have something come out of my life. He wants fruit to be born out of my life. Mm -hmm. He wants something to grow beyond the, the thoughts and, and the ideas that I can't conceive. Yes. So what's the issue if I don't really see this happening in my life? Why, why is it that my life still looks like just a thing of soil? But the, you have to remember that all the nutrients, yeah. all the minerals, Come on. everything that plant yeah. needs Come is on. already in the life that God has already given you. Jesus. It's already there. So farmers understand that when they want to kill a weed yeah. or when they, want, they don't want something to grow, That's right. they either use landscaping fabric mm -hmm. or they use a, a weed killer. That's right. Or they use stones. Mm -hmm. They use a mineral that is already God created to kill off something that he does not want to grow. That's right. And stones are not necessarily a bad thing. In life, we get hit with stuff all the time. From the left and right. From the north and the south. Yes, Lord. Things come, things go. We get hit. But how do we deal with those things? Hallelujah. How do we cope with those things? Come on, son. Do we go to God first? Oh, God. Or do we have our own things that we rely on, but even before we consult with God about how to deal with these things? Oh, Jesus. And what happens is when we cope with the drugs, Lord, when we I cope know. with the friends that we don't need to be connected with, yeah. when we cope with binge watching Netflix, yeah. and no, having friends. Watching Netflix, those are not bad things. Yes. Just like these stones that the landscapers use to kill weeds. These stones are not bad things. But if you, let, if you keep on using those things as a habit and not rely on God, they calcify. The minerals get heated and they get pressure over a long period of time. And that's how a stone is created. Stones are created because the minerals in the earth and the sun and the heat from the natural elements, they pressurize over a long period of time and they become stones. Yes. So what happens when you constantly try to watch TV to cope with your, with your issues of life? What happens when you revert to drugs and alcohol just to cope with the issues of life? What happens when you, you think about doing something to yourself because you just want to cope with the issues and, 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 and things of life. When you start doing these things over a long period of time, the pressures of life, the heat of life, cause those things to become stones. And what happens is, you already have the life that God wants you to have. You already have a, a purpose. You already have a destiny that is meant for your life. But what happens is, you subconsciously have stones. My God. Your pride. Oh, come on, preach now. Your, 
your refusal to give up what people think about you, your own ideologies, what you think you should have, beyond that, which is not doesn't compare to what God really wants you to have. Yes, Lord. Your own goals, but not necessarily God's will, yeah. can become a stone. Yes, sir. And your issues. You want to pop off whenever you want to pop off because you think you're right. Come on, Because and, and your emotions are not bad. They're just a natural reaction that God gives you based on the situation. It is an indicator that something is off. That's right. Happiness is an emotion. It's an indicator that something is good. Yes. So emotions are not necessarily stones, but when they hinder your growth, right. when they become. hinder you from getting closer to God, they become, become stones. A stone. A stone. Your refusal to make things right with your brother or your sister. Come on. You think that, okay, you know what? I'm not going to talk to them. That I think it will just boil over and we'll just get over it. Nope. Silent is good sometimes. Yes. But when silent becomes habitual, right. it becomes stone. a stone. Yes. That's right. Amen. So we have all these things that we use as subconscious coping mechanisms. But it's actually preventing growth. growth. Yes, My yes. Jesus. Yes, yes. They're preventing growth. Yes. So every time these stones get deposited on top of the life oh, God. that God gives us, oh, God. it's preventing growth. My Jesus. And going back to scripture, every time you see a stone being moved into a place, it represents death. Yes. Lord Jesus. It represents a, a stoppage or a barrier being put in place. For example, we see David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. He had a slingshot by his side, mm -hmm. and he was the main one to go up to the giant and say, I don't come with weapons and, and swords and knives, yeah. but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Yeah. So he took a slingshot and took a stone Flung it at Goliath, and with one stone, took the giant out. That's it. We see Daniel in the lion's den. Yes. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den by the own king that said, Okay, Daniel, your God should have mercy on you, but I have to throw you in the den anyway. Yes. And with that said, what did he do once he threw Daniel in? He rolled a stone over the den. Yes. And he took his ring and put a stamp yes, sir. on the stone to say, you know what? I don't want this to happen, but this has to happen. Oh, Daniel, Jesus. you have to die. Jesus. Only because he put a signet on the stone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Lazarus, when he, was, when he died, they wrapped his body in linen. Yes. And they had to take his body to a tomb. And what did they roll over that tomb? A stone. That's right. Jesus, when he died, the same Why way he was yes. wrapped in linen. His body was preserved in urban spices. His his body was prepared by death from people. Yeah. And what they had to do, they had to find a tomb and roll stone. into place a stone. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So when you go through life and you subconsciously put these stones on top of the purpose that God has for you, it prevents the life that God wants to have for you. So you walk around with these stones, and as I'm putting these stones in this vase, this thing is becoming heavy. Yes, sir. So we walk around with all these stones acting like we're light. Yeah. When in fact, you're heavy. Yes. You are, your spirit, your confidence to show that something is inside your spirit, inside your soulless realm, and it's causing all of this weight. Yes. No, I never mentioned that any of those things are necessarily sin, but to an extent, when it becomes a first priority besides God, yes. those yes. things wow. become yes. sin. Yes. Because it's preventing the yes. life that God has for you yes. to become it into full fruition. Yes. yes. Amen. All right. That's awesome. So, with that being said, The word of God is what we just talked about is a seed. Yes. So you come to church, right? Yes. 
I put myself in it. I come to church and I have these stones that I'm carrying. And I get to a place where, you know what? Like we just saw in the word in verse 5, it says, Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. Now, let's go down to verse 16. Where it says, others, this is Jesus explaining that same parable. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. Mm -hmm. So watch. When I'm coming in with weight, or I come in contact with the word with how, where you come on contact, get in contact with the word Monday through Saturday, and you hear the word of God. You receive it joyfully. You put it in him. But you, you already know and understand. You remember the word, right? So you know and understand that the word has to be planted inside of you. But I, I, you can receive the word joyfully. But because the stones are there, mm. it's kind of hard to have the word planted if all these stones... Yes, sir. Are blocking the planting. Oh, Jesus. No matter where I try to have this word sown in my heart, it can't get to where it needs to be. It can't be planted inside where it needs to be. And remember, this soil represents the life God wants you to have. In order for the, the word of God to be sown, it has to be sown in the right place. Right. The right place. It can't be sown on top of stones. Jesus. It can't be sown on top of the issues, the things, and the coping yeah. mechanisms that you want to use to deal with your issues. In order for this to happen, these stones can't stay. Can't stay. These Come stones on. can't stay in the place where God wants to Come plant on. his word. That's right. So what happens when I realize that these stones are here? What right, right happens when I realize that the word of God, I get it and I receive joy. I receive it joyfully. I get happy when I receive the word of God. I come yes. to church every Sunday and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get a word. Yes, right. Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm get, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, Lord. But at the same time, the word is not being planted. Yes, planted. Come on. Yes, sir. When you go throughout this life, save, unsaved. You, the, the goal is to have the word planted inside your heart. Because everything that God has for you, everything that God wants to do in you, is inside the soil. Yeah. Yes, yes. But if you have all these stones yes, sir. blocking the potential that God has for you, the word is still of value. The life that God has for you is still of value. But it can't come forth. Lord Jesus. So what do I have to do? It's time to do something about these stones. Yes, yes. Come on. And like I just open up. That's it. Every time I move, a stone is moved into position, it represents a death. It re represents a barrier. It represents something happening that causes an interruption. But every time, you see a stone being removed from position. It represents life. Yes. Right. It represents a new thing. It represents a resurrection. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every time you see a stone being pulled out of a place in what's, where it once was, it represents <coughs> life. It represents a new thing. It represents a resurrection. Jesus was called the chief corner stone, stone because yeah. it was the stone that the builders rejected. rejected. It was in the builders' provision, but since they rejected it, it was removed from the position it once was. Mm -hmm. Lazarus, when he was buried and Jesus came to the tomb, Jesus didn't move the tomb himself. He told the people and the Jews and Mary, hey, Lazarus is in there, but once he got there, Jesus told the people, remove the stone. stone. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he died, mm -hmm. 
John had to go to Pilate and told Pilate, hey, Pilate, I understand what was done was done, but now I have to take, I want to take his body down and move it to the tomb. They put Jesus' body in the tomb. But when it was time to, for the tomb, for them to actually go in and do what they needed to do with Jesus' body, with Jesus' body, they had to remove the stone. stone yes. But when they went back to the tomb, when they went to go find Jesus' body, they went to the tomb and realized that the stone was removed. removed. Yes. It was taken out of place so that not only they can see that the stone was removed, but they had to see that Jesus was already resurrected. Amen. They went inside the tomb and found the linen that was wrapped around his head. Amen. They found the linen that was wrapped around his body. And the angel just sitting there chilling, hey, who y'all looking for? Come on, he's not there. And that's what you want to, that's what you want in your life. You want to come to a place where these stones that were once there, Yes, sir. Come on. They're not there. They're not there no more. Yes, sir. I'm not. I'm not popping off when when something hits me. That's right. I'm not getting triggered Come by certain on. things. Come on. That's right. I'm not resorting to binging whatever I want to binge on when I want to cope with my issues. Come That's on. right. I get joy in spite of what's yes. going on around me. That's right. Yeah. I'm operating in self-control yes, right. when I when I feel like everything around me is going haywire. Mm -hmm. the, the things I need to take care of in life, I don't push away from them. I take them on Come on. because I know it's something that God has put in my life to help me grow. That's it. So in the midst of doing all these things, you realize that the stone can't that was there, can't stay there. Is, that, is not there no more. That's right. And this promotes the potential. To grow. For the word of God to, grow in you. Yes. to be planted yes. on the inside yes. of you. Yes, sir. And when this seed is planted, it's now hidden. Yes. Oh, God. And the yes, thing sir. about it is, once the word of God is planted in you, because you've done removed the stones, people are not going to see it. Come on. At Preach. first. Preach. But when the when the troubles and the persecution that comes Ooh. from life, and just because the word is inside of you, Lord Jesus. it don't take you out. That's it. Right. The sun, Come on. the wind, the, shine, the storms, yes. Yes, sir. it blows away all the other plants that. because that were not planted. Yes, yes, sir. But they end up providing exactly what the word of God needs yes. when it's planted. The sun helps the seed. Yes, the water helps the seed. Yes. And when that seed is planted, that seed has to break. Yeah. The seed has no option but to break yeah. when it's planted. So when we see that the word is now planted in our lives because we done removed the stones, we become like Psalms 1. Yeah. That man that meditates on the word day and night. He becomes planted yeah. like a tree yeah. near streams of living water. Yeah. So whatever atmosphere that seed goes in. Whatever the atmosphere that seed finds itself in, it doesn't get troubled, but it draws everything Lord that Jesus. it needs. Jesus. Despite, despite of who you're around, when that seed is planted in you, you will be able to sit at the cookout. You will be able to go to your job. You will be able to go out in the store. And when you're sitting at that table, conversing with everybody else, and they're sitting there talking about A, B, C, D, this and the other, you're not troubled. You're not feeling uncomfortable. You're right where you're supposed to be. Right. Because when you do that, you'll be able to draw and hear Jesus. what God wants you to hear. Jesus. And you'll be able to say and do what God wants you to do. Only because the seed has been planted. And when that seed is planted, that seed breaks, roots grow down. So that a plant can arise. Yes. Hallelujah. And when that plant grows, then people will able, be able to see that something was already rooted on the inside of you. So don't be so concerned about how a thing, how you may look to other people. Don't cold switch. 
That's right. Just make sure that the stones are not staying in a place where they can't produce growth. Amen. I'm not saying, okay, just start cutting people off, start cutting this off, start cutting that off. Stop doing things that you find pleasure in or you enjoy. But keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. Make God your first priority so that when you come across these things in, in, in the world, you don't get swayed to and fro by every sound that's of doctrine. It, that's it. So this is what you want when it comes to your growth in the, in the Lord. But at the same time, you could have, you could be in a place to where you're, you're, you're growing, you're being planted, and you come around other plants. Come on. You come around other plants, and you be like, oh, they, they must got going on because, you know, they, they look real flourishing. <laughs> they, they, they got the plants, they got the flower, they got buds coming up. And you be like, you know what, I want to I see if that thing... We can grow off of each other. Let, let's see if we can we can get get something get together and make something happen. But when you start to realize that, okay, once you get a little bit closer to the plant, once you realize that, you know what? I want to check to see what kind of fertilizer and dirt and soil they've been using. I want to check to see like what 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 seed was plant, was planted in them. What testimony that they have. That I can feed off even more, so I can get oh, even Jesus. more growth. Right. But what you will find out is some plants. Let me let me see. I, I had. I, I wanted to find some roots. I, I see the container you, that you're placing. I see your personality. I see who, who God created you to the, the be in. I see the. Oh, some stuff is falling off. And, oh. Ain't real. It's not real. <laughs> That's right. It's, I mean, you, you fix yourself up to look like a certain thing, but. Come on, I, 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 I need, I need, I want to see some roots. Come yes, sir. I want to see. I want to see like how deep the roots were. Yes. I want to see how long you've been growing. Yes. I want I want to see like how did you get three different plants inside of Ooh. you? How how right. how did that happen? And this is what you don't want. You don't want to come to a place where you're cold switching so much. Come on. You're relying on things so much Ooh, to help God. please you. That's good, son. Do you realize that you're dressing up? To look like a thing that you're really not. Jesus. Amen. And this was my fear growing up. I did not want to become the stereotype. Lord Jesus. I did not want to come the preconceived notion of what a Christian should be okay. or should act or should look. I want I needed to be the real thing. So if it took me to be just dirt, and if, if it took me to have all these stones being removed, if it took this whole process to get to be a real plan, a real thing that could benefit others. I was willing to do this instead of quickly and staying to become this. Yes, yes. Yes. So today, now truly I wasn't mistaken for you long. Which one, which one do you want? Soil. Which one do you really want? Do you want just a star phone? image of what people or you think God wants you to be or do you want do you want to be planted want to be planted do you want to come to a place to where you know what I want I want I want to be so malleable I want to be to a place where God told Israel through Ezekiel you know what I'm gonna remove a heart of stone so I can give you a heart of flesh I want to get to a place to where, you know what, I'd rather just be this and have the word of God playing the enemy so that all the nutrients, yes, all the minerals, all the things that God has created before I was born can be pulled out of me so that I can become the plant. I can be become the flower. I be become the thing that God wants to be in this life. Come on. 
Because I can tell you something. Me being at 38 years old, walking. your time is ticking. Come on. Say that again. Your time is ticking. Come on, it's ticking. So the longer you decide what you want to be, Come on. The, the more time that you're wasting. You're wasting time. I understand you might be young. I'm still young. I understand that you feel like you just got a whole lot set ahead of you. But you don't know when your time is going to end. You don't know. Talk to the youth, sir. And yeah. you have to have to make the decision. Come on. Today. That's yeah. right. Right now. You want bleach. You want God to, to handmade you and keep you in a place to where you want to be, gro to be growing and become the real thing. Or you just want to cold switch. Come on. You want to come to a place where you know what? I'd rather be the real thing on certain times when I'm around certain people. And when I'm not, I just want to be whoever I want to be. My God. So today, That's it's good. the time to make a decision. That's good. Yes, it's time to make a decision. Which, which, you, which one you want which to be? Which one you want? I'm not going to sugarcoat it or anything like that, but Tell it. if you have a decision to make, and you already made that decision based on the word that you heard today, you can do so. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm out of my time, but this was good. at this time, it was awesome. let us all stand. Lord, we praise you for your word. Rich word. Thank you. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. And we're just going to come at a point of contact right now with the person next to you.